If you were in a group of four people and one of your best friends passed away, but after he passed away, you found out that every year he has been putting clues to find a dead man's treasure, would you actually go and find it? I'm Jay Simkovitz and welcome back to another movie review. Today I am reviewing the movie Without a Paddle. That is correct, Without a Paddle. With Seth Green, Matthew Lillard, Dax Shepard. This movie is a comedy. It is hilariously funny. You cannot get like you would just die laughing. You would probably pee yourself laughing. How funny it is. It's about four guys who who are best friends as kids, and their best friend Billy dies. Ooh, that's sad. That's really sad. But he died living a full life that most of us would love to have. We would love to have a full life of doing things like uh, climbing up Mount Everest, um, having a woman who would still want us even though we're dead, or just being the best person you can be. I mean, we all want to be like that, to have the, to be the best person we can be. So this guy, Billy, dies in a parasailing accident or parachute accident. And his best friends, you got his best friends, uh, Tom, uh, Dan, and I can't think of the other guy's name. What's his name? Um... Well, I can't think of his name. To save my life. And I just freaking watched the movie. I mean, literally. <coughs> so them three, um, they go back to their tree house where they've always uh, had a nice tree house when they were kids with their, with their best friend, Billy. And they open up the lock chest that, well, the lock that they had that uh, they kept their most prized possessions that they would keep there until they found D.B. Cooper's treasure. Well, they found out that Billy was actually putting pieces of the treasure every year in there. So, like, to, to find it, to help find the treasure, to be exact. Like, where he might have landed, stuff like that, use the map, and yada, yada, yada. And so, they're like, let's go on, let's go on this crazy adventure, and they do. And they have the most craziest time getting into trouble by using a canoe and bringing a bunch of beer in the canoe, um, getting chased by a bear, and Dan, who is the youngest, who, well, the smallest, and is played by Seth, uh, Seth, uh, Seth Green. I was going to say Seth Rogen, but, no, Seth Green. And he becomes a cub because the fact is the mother thinks he is a cub. And so he loses his cell phone because the bear eats it. So they are traveling in the forest of middle of nowhere. And they find two guys who like to blow up fish with their dynamite. But also finds out they're pot farmers. Yes, that is a surprising thing. And they are pot farmers in the middle of nowhere. And so they get chased by these two guys and the two dogs that they have. And they get trapped into, they get chased into the water where literally they have to use uh, reeds, water reeds, or these, they look like bamboo sticks, best way to put it, where they stick where they can breathe out of so that they don't die underwater. And so as they're there, you got, you got Dan who is, who is, has the, the bamboo in his mouth and a bug crawls into his mouth from the top of the, the bamboo and down the chute and into his mouth. And it's hilarious. He he is like just dying there of it. And so the two big guys that that have the dogs, they go and they they go away because they think they went they went down the river when really they didn't. And so finally they get to a part where they find these two ladies, and these ladies are like they're cute, but they're nasty in the sense of their legs, their legs. Well, not my foot, but their legs are hairy like a man's legs. That is so gross. As they say, oh, naturel, which is, uh, like, disgustingly gross. But, you know, the factor is that they, they are in a big redwood tree because they are there to protect... Um, 
the tree from being cut down and they have to live up there if they want it to not be cut down at all. So you got the two bad guys, they come down, they come and they find them and literally they are ready to chop that tree down and they got a big, nice chainsaw that they're using to cut down the tree. So they're cutting into the tree just a little bit and so the girls get the idea of throwing their poop while the guys escape on a rope. And so they escape, they steal a nice uh, four-wheeler or ATV, and they are off to the races. That's it. They're trying to escape, and you got the two bad guys shooting them, trying to kill them as they're on the other four-wheeler, and they just can't. So they finally find a clearing. They're like, oh yeah, go, go, to the, go to the left. There's a clearing there. Well, lo and behold, they fly and they land in water and they are just in their underwear. That's it. That's all they have. Just their underwear on and their shoes. And so they hit that water and they are lost because they finally get out of the water, but they are totally lost. So they find a place to huddle, as in they spoon, and they're there to keep warm, and this old geezer comes out of nowhere, and they're like, oh crap, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead. So the old geezer takes them over to his cabin, where he's been living for 30 years, and you find out that is D.B. Cooper's best friend. So the next day, they get out of the cabin, and they find Dan's cell phone that was eaten by the bear. It was literally lying in a pile of poop. And I can't, Jerry, that's his name, Jerry, Jerry, the other guy. So just to show you, you got Jerry, Dan, and you got Tom. Those are the three good best friends. Now, as it goes, Jerry finds the cell phone and he makes a call to his, um, to his supposedly girlfriend. But uh, unfortunately, she is leaving him, which is terrible too. I know how that feels to have someone who doesn't want you. Now the factor is they get out and the two bad guys come blazing in with guns, shooting everybody and D.B. Cooper's friend comes out with his guns and starts shooting them, destroys the ATV and lo and behold, the, the uh, three guys run away and they fall into a hole where they find the main man, D.B. Cooper. That's where, his, where, where he was and so as it goes, he was burning his money to stay alive. And that's what they believe is the real treasure, just to live life, just to stay warm, to live life for the next few hours, for the next few moments. Because life is very important, and I agree, life is very important. So they finally get so they finally get out of the hole by Dan climbing out of the hole, and lo and behold, the two guys are there, and Dan smacks them with a log, and they both go into they both go into um, the hole where uh, Jerry and Tom are left because they couldn't get out. And finally, they get out of the hole because the sheriff comes. And the sheriff is working with the two idiots who are the bad guys because they're working for the sheriff. And the sheriff is the main hub of the pot farmer guy who owns it all. And so... They find out that they are going to be shot. But lo and behold, Dan picks up a grenade that one of the fat guys left behind. And as it goes, uh, passes it over to Jerry. And Jerry is talking with the three guys and says, well, what's more important? My life, your life, whose life, whatever. I got a grenade here. Now choose your. Now choose what you want. And the, and the three guys are all scared like, oh, like dang. And so... What happens is Jerry drops the grenade and it's a horrible situation. And Jerry finds it and takes it and throws it and it lands in front of the three guys that are running away, the three bad guys, and it hits a tree and you are like, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? So it explodes and the three bad guys land on the ground from the explosion and so does Tom, Dan, and Jerry. And lo and behold, the big giant tree comes in smacks them, doesn't kill them, but smacks them hard enough that they are out for the count and they are taken away to prison as it goes. And that is where D.B. Cooper's friend finally gets out and he's carrying D.B. Cooper on his back and he leaves the parachute with Tom, Jerry, and Dan. And lo and behold, what's under there but like a hundred grand. I mean, that's a lot of money to people. And you know, they all, Tom, uh, no, 
Jerry and Dan give it to Tom because Tom needs it more, but Jerry doesn't need it because he realizes the most important thing is his girlfriend, Denise, which he doesn't have. And so um, Dan's like, well, I bet you a hundred grand and my left nut. So he gives his portion to Tom and he's like, well, it's not over. You gave me the money, but you didn't give me your left nut and I'm getting your left nut as he pulls out a knife. And so you don't see it, but he really doesn't take his left nut. But the fact there is that um, Jerry goes back home and he's talking to his girlfriend by um, leaving a message on the phone by saying, you know, I want to be with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and have a wife and kids and everything. And he pulls out a ring and proposes to her. And you see at the end, you see Dan in love with one of the tree girls who is, oh, natural legs, which is gross. But hey, what can I say? If that's what he likes, he likes it. Okay, but I don't. But that's what happens to them, and that's how it ends in the video. And, you know, to be honest, that movie was awesome. I really enjoyed it. I loved it. It was great. It was funny for a comedy. I mean, really, it, it, it was an adventure comedy, as I'd call it, because they're in the middle of nowhere, and it's an adventure. But it's comedy because they're laughing, because it's a laughing movie where you just laugh until you pee yourself. It is hilariously funny. You will enjoy it. So, remember... If you enjoyed this movie review, hit that thumbs up. Also, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe below to my channel. And don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and everyone on social media. And most importantly, remember, I do not upload on Sundays, but I load every other day. That is every other day except for Sundays.